you are the first one to get in, the last one to get out. It's usually, you know, long days and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's very rewarding when everything goes okay, but it's ball breaking when it's not okay. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. The God Dog is barking again. On album number three, Belgian band Bark brings us an angry but more mature sound than ever before. I sat down with band leader and producer Martin to learn all about it. Martin, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. The dogs are barking loud again. Uh, album number three, uh, how have the reactions been so far? Uh, nice to see you, Jasper. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the invitation, first of all. Uh, the reactions have been really awesome, man. Uh, we, are, we are very um, enthusiastic about it. We would like to play, man. That's really <laughs> what we li would like to do. Because, you know, the reactions are good. Um, we have four releases now uh, in, in all Latin America, besides the, the one that we do here in Europe. Um, so we have in Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, you know, it's going great. So we can't wait to, to yeah, go yeah. on the road, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so let's and well, I want to talk about that in just a little bit, but uh, first to focus on the album, uh, let's get straight to it. This seems to be a more personal record um, and also a clearer sound, I would say. Is Written in Stone the album on which Bark has truly found itself? Probably, yeah. Uh, you know, we were coming, it, it's very special album for us because we were coming from a weird period, you know, we, we had the lineup change. Uh, and uh, it, it was a tough one, you know, because, uh, yeah, we, we are good friends, you know, and uh, uh, we started the band together, so it's not easy to, to, to see your friend go, you know? Uh, so we were a little bit down at the time of comp composing it, and I thought it would be the last one, you know? That's why the whole imagery is like a cemetery and the dog goes underground, you know, to the, to the grave, and... Um, you know, things started to change when we started to compose the album. We, we were like getting enthusiastic and tone, the new guitarist appeared and, uh, you know, a little bit of a renewal in the atmosphere. So, but we still kept that, you know, grave thing. I think we found a really good, uh, a new way, you know, because in the beginning we started with very short songs, you know, everything was a little bit more punk, let's say. Okay. And in this album, we put more influences of, of, of heavy metal, for example, things that we didn't do before. And uh, I think that the mix, uh, it was really refreshing, at least for us. So yeah, probably we found, I don't know if we found ourselves, but we found something that we are very happy that we found. <laughs> to talk, to use the word happy, you know, Bark has never made a happy sounding record. Uh, uh, this was a more difficult album to make then. M making it probably was the easiest one <laughs> because we were like on fire, you know. Uh, I I think we did, the, we had the first song for this album that, that was written in stone, that was the, the first one uh, we wrote for this album, was written in like three years ago, man, in, in February 2018, oh. I think it was. So it was a long process, you know, things were going around and we had like six songs. And then at the end of November last uh, 2019, I started to compose like this. It, it was insane. So we said, OK, man, let's record the album, you know, let's go with the flow because the, the songs were coming. I was playing with Tom and uh, we, we had something. So, you know, we, we have our own rehearsal studio. Uh, where we can record everything. I, I make records, that my, that's my profession. So I said, let's go, man, boom, let's do it. So uh, it was pretty, pretty straightforward. I think in one month, we recorded everything. Okay, well, I mean, now that you mentioned a title track, uh, I think it is one of my favorites of the album, maybe together with I'm a Wreck, uh, a lot of energy there. Um, 
is, is it are you still too close to it still too new for you or can you also say like yeah this one is is particularly a song that i can't wait to play live um well both that you say i love them uh, it's probably one of my favorites written in stone also because it was a, a how the song came you know uh, it, it's a very nice moment that i remember when i composed it and stuff like that um but yeah I, i'm i'm still fan of the album i like it usually i don't i don't listen to our albums you know unless i have to relearn some song or something like that but this one i do i'm very proud of this one i, I think um it, yeah we exercised a lot of stuff in yeah, this yeah, one yeah, i, yeah, I yeah. feel good you know it feels good to listen to it to play it loud it's also a loud album you know i like to play it here in the studio sometimes and uh, it pumps me up you know um i like to rehearse you know because I have to keep uh, fresh the playing, you know, uh, now that we're not playing live and stuff like that, every now and then I have to revisit the songs because you forget them, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I really like to play it, you know, it's a fun album to play as a musician, so, uh, oh, it's great, I'm very happy with it. <laughs> also, there's, there's a lot of different influences on this album, maybe more so than before, although Mark has always had a quite, you know, mixed sound, a result of that, you know, mixed approach, if you will, is so you guys can play for a hardcore crowd, for a hard rock or classic metal crowd, and also for an extreme metal crowd. Um, is that is that a blessing or is that sometimes a curse where, you know, there are bands that they're so mixed that <clears throat> they're not close enough to other things as well. Like, how do you experience that? With, with us, uh, it's very true what you say. It's, it's really like that. Eh? Um, we've been invited to everything. We play in all kinds of festivals, all, of all kinds of venues and with many different bands and in general I, I don't remember any time that the band was badly received or anything like that but I do know that uh, for some crowds it's too in the middle let's say you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, it's not really death metal but but it's kind of death metal but it's not really so for traditional purist uh, people from any genre we are completely you know not close enough to anything some people like it uh, i love that because I, as i told you before you know uh, i listen to everything I, I don't like to to do just one style mm -hmm. um, but yeah for us it's a blessing but uh, i can understand that for some people we are too much uh, of a mix of everything you know Bark is in any way a live band or a band that needs to play live. How is uh, you've also said already a couple of times that you can't wait to play some of these songs. Yeah. Um, very often, um, when when a member of the band is also a professional, you know, producer, mixer, engineer like yourself, that is not always the case. Like, how is that for you? Like, where do you feel most? Like, where are you most in your zone when you're working with another band on a project or when you're on stage with Bart? Wow. I feel at home everywhere, you know? I, I like to be busy with music. Um, I do a lot of different things, you know? I do live sound. Uh, um, for many bands that I do the live sound, I, I do tour management as well. For example, I work with Destruction, with Aborted. Um, and with those two, with Nervosa, with these three bands, I do tour management. But then the Flotsam and Jetsam, no, I do just, you know, the the, the live sound and someone else does that. Uh, then in the studio, I produce, I play, I play with my band, you know, from all that stuff, what, what I like the, the most, I like everything. Uh, maybe I should say what I like the, the least is to be tour manager, <laughs> you know, that because it's, <laughs> Is, you know, all the problems come to you, you know, you are the first one to get in, the last one to get out. It's usually, you know, long days and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's very rewarding when everything goes okay, but it's ball breaking <laughs> when it's not okay, you know? <laughs> yeah, I would assume that from a, from a, a record studio career, 
perpetual mm -hmm. chaos of nervosa is one of the highlights in your career so far yeah, yeah it's, um, it's the most important album yeah for sure but then at the same time you've got also the bark album so is that is that tough as a person to you know it's, it's almost as as having multiple children that have a birthday at the same time and you know, <laughs> who are you celebrating with <laughs> that's a that's a good one no, you know, I enjoy everything I do. Uh, otherwise, I really don't do it. I, I don't work, for example, with bands I don't like, or I don't do records that I know I'm not going to like, you know. Uh, that's, that's not the, the way I like to work, you know. Uh, the Nervosa album wa was recorded like six months after we finished the Bark album. The Bark album is finished in, in April 2020, so was a why we didn't know what to do, you know, because the pandemic, maybe the shows, maybe they come back, maybe they don't. So we were like keeping the album, keeping the album. Then we say, fuck this, you know, let's just release it, make it a 2020. Uh, that was important for me at the moment. I said, let's be the sign of the times of that year, you know? And uh, so it was ready way before we started recording the Nervosa album. So I already was past it. Um, it was great to see them, you know, yeah, it's it's your kids, eh? albums mm -hmm. are your kids. It's good to see them grow, you know, to, to release the Bark album uh, is great when you see, you know, with the artwork, the physical format, you know, the, the or the, the the vinyl, like they say, it ah, looks great and stuff like that. And same with the Nervosa album, I, I got my copies, um, the label was so kind to, to send it to me. It was amazing, man, and, and I remember how, how it was there in Malaga. That there is a documentary you know it was a beautiful place beautiful studio and you know it, it brings a lot of nostalgic feelings they say Fuck, man that was fun I, I knew it would be great i knew it was their best album and uh, i was very happy to be part of it you know uh, back to the bark album you mentioned the artwork um yeah. now that we have you know three full-length albums in and with three appearances on the cover we can talk about officially a mascot uh, for for Bart yeah, 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 now. Absolutely. Uh, what's the backstory behind this the skeletal dude with with the dead dog on his head? The Bark thing came uh, one night that that uh, we were coming from another band, but that band kind of split it. You know, our dente was called. It, it kind of didn't work anymore. So we said, okay, well, what are we gonna do? And we started to jump. And you know, most half of the first album came alive in, in that night. I was super excited and, you know, drinking beer, stuff like that. Uh, and, and we thought, man, we really have something. And I like the short songs. And I, and I would like, you know, a singer that, that, that is like a dog. I said, someone that can bark. And the drummer said, bark is a great name for the band. Whoa, and what is a bark? It's the voice of uh, of a dog. And, Whoa, and go dog. We started with all that bullshit, you know, like brainstorming. And uh, the dog god idea came. And uh, I remember I went back to Argentina uh, to visit family and stuff like that. And a, a, a very good designer, drawer there, very good friend of mine. Uh, I told him, I would like you to do the, the cover artwork. And we just saw five minutes there. What do you want? I want I want a dog god that is not cool at all. It's, 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 you know, it's not a cool god. It's a badass motherfucker. Cool, and he sent me the first artwork of Voice of Dog. And they were like, whoa, that was amazing. You know, he has this helmet of a dog, you know. Um, and then from there, you you start to to make ideas around it. You know, it's like, a, it's an animal cult uh, bark, you know, it's, it's the connection with the, the most animal side of us, you know doesn't think too much, more impulse, more, more, you know, rabid and uh, instinct and stuff like that. And uh, by continuation of that, we start to go, you know, we, we have very street songs, you know, very nocturnal, you know, we have dodgy characters all over the place, you know, it's, it's like the imagery went that way. And th this guy is the representation of all that, you know. He has a voice that is a friend of mine from Argentina. He's the singer of a great band there, Los Antiguos. I invite him always, you know, hey man, you want to say something for this album? Yes, okay. And he says whatever he wants, you know. Un 
you mentioned it. Uh, you are from Argentina, from Buenos Aires, as I'm not, if I'm yes. not mistaken. Um, you live now in Antwerp. I'm originally from Antwerp or the greater Antwerp area. Um, I've been to Buenos Aires. Antwerp and Buenos Aires, although they are in vastly different countries um, and they are different cities, they somehow also felt to me quite similar in a way. Um, yeah. How, <laughs> like, you know, if you have to, if you have to reduce your, your experience of living in Antwerp as an Argentinian uh, to, you know, to one feeling or to one example, like, how is that like for you? It was a big change, you know, because the city is 10 times smaller, but, but, you know, Antwerp is a, is a, it's a small city that feels really big because a lot of things happen, you know, there's a lot of nationalities because of the of the hub and the, the port there, you know, a lot of stuff happened. I, I don't know. It's a good question. Um, it's home for me, Antwerp, you know, it, it's it, it really feels like home. Um, and I have also the same when I go to Buenos Aires, you know, I, and then I said, fuck, man, this is home. I missed it. But then with time, I start to miss also Antwerp. And when I come to Antwerp, I miss Buenos Aires. You know, it's a little bit, it's the life of the immigrant. You know it very well. You know, uh, you know how that feels that, that you feel a little bit like citizen of the world, you know? But um, I feel very comfortable here. I made a lot of friends. Uh, and I, I can I can do what I love, you know? That, that summer for me, I remember that I fell in love with the city the first night because there was music everywhere. Back in the day, you know, 2007 that was, there were a lot of bars and cafeques where you can play and uh, jazz bars and stuff like that. Now it's a little bit less because, you know, the bohemian parts of the city are starting to be demolished and they put you a great building for rich people and stuff like that and a lot of venues or small bars closed but um, I felt it was amazing how how the city was so musical so maybe music that's a uh, amber for me Amber is music totally oh, awesome. <laughs> amber music city <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> for those who don't know that is a let's call it a, a mecca for recording and playing uh, in the heart of yeah. the city where Bark yes, yes. Uh, has its roots. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, Martin, thank you so much for your time this morning. Um, yes, you know, really excited about the new album. Let's all hope that um, it doesn't take too long anymore before you guys can, you know, plan some tour dates and uh, take this new music on the road so that the dog god can bark again in front of an audience. Thank you so much for your time and uh, look you, forward man. to uh, our next conversation. Yes, man. Fingers crossed. We we'll see you soon. All right. So if you like that video, click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.